Hey, thanks for coming by my channel today. You're watching Head First Fishing on YouTube. We're here at the Fly Room at St. Pete Fishing Outfitters in St. Petersburg, Florida. Today I want to talk about something that is really exciting to me, and that's fishing for triple tail. I'm really excited about this type of fishing because I recently had an awesome trip going out and looking for these guys on different various floating debris. Now, I originally started out as a bottom fishing trip. We went out and caught snapper of various types. We got porgies, a small grouper, things like that. Uh, and then moving around and hunting for more bottom spots, I ended up coming upon some floating debris. And that debris had triple tail on it. Now, I had heard reports from another captain friend of mine. His name's Claude Henson of Not Magic Charters. And he had told me that he had been out out of clear water and that they were triple tail all over the place. He said they were on darn near every piece of floating debris that he saw. So when I had this uh, plastic bag float by, I was really excited to have that confirmation of what he said. So we set up on this bag and we started throwing live shrimp and white bait at it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, without realizing, it actually scared some of the fish away. So we just kept casting, kept casting. We didn't know that we had scared them away. But the cool thing about triple tail is they're actually not quite as shy as other species of fish and they will come back to an object that they had been relating to or, or hiding at or hanging out at uh, after a period of time even if you do uh, scare them away at first they're pretty cool like that they're, they're somewhat forgiving so those fish came back and we put some shrimp and white bait in their faces and a, a well-placed cat cast did the trick and uh, he jumped all over it hooked up, got the fish in. It was a really cool experience. Uh, so we decided we we're gonna move on and go fish another area. Well, lo and behold, right near that area we intended to go, there was a crab trap buoy. It's stone crab season here in Florida and these traps are all over the place. And stone crab traps and triple tail, they go hand in hand. So if you got crab pot buoys floating around all over the place, you're gonna have these fish out there hanging around. These fish are associated with uh, upper ends of the water column uh, and they just love to hang out stuff that's uh, floating. They, uh, they'll sit up sideways or even flat to the surface of the water and hide around stuff or you know, if there's ropes or lines uh, coming up from the bottom, they'll be you know, up and down that line in the middle of the water column. Uh, this is just something that they've evolved to do. I have no idea why, but it seems to be working for them. Um, I can imagine that any other little critter that wants to hang out around that crab pot line or that buoy or whatever, whatever else that might be floating in the water, uh, that triple tail is probably going to feed on that. So anything presented uh, like uh, a new roommate for that little piece of, of floating debris is probably going to get eaten by a triple tail. So we had shrimp and white bait and, and that worked fine. Uh, but I would say if you want to throw lures, uh, match those natural baits as much as possible. And I've got a couple of different things that I think would work great. So uh, it just so happens that the fly tying class or the fly tying group that goes on here at Wednesdays at 6 p.m., uh, they happen to have what seems to be a popping shrimp right here. And I think that would probably get a triple tail's interest. It's got uh, little uh, antennas right here. It's got beaded eyes. It's got the general color, a brownish color, tan of a brown shrimp. And it's got a little plated surface right here near the hook eye. So you could work that on top of the water and it would create a little wake or a little pop. And I think that would probably be really attractive to a triple tail. Uh, next, You've got a mirror lure with really good looking eyes on it and it has a pattern on it that is the same as a white bait. It's the same body color pattern as the bait we were using. I think that would probably get eaten. Next, shrimp. You want a really, really realistic looking shrimp. Now I've seen videos of people catching them on DOAs. DOAs have caught millions of fish. However, I really like the looks of these live target shrimp. These things are really, really good looking, and I think they have a good amount of weight on them. You could make a good cast and throw it and work that shrimp right by that crab pot or that log or whatever you're fishing, and I think they would probably jump all over that. And then, let's say maybe you need to throw a little scent into the game. Well, Berkeley Gulp has some of the best scented lures out there. so. 
these lures are three inch hollow bodied shrimp. And I think a hollow bodied shrimp might be a good choice because you want something that's going to stay near the surface of the water. So with a hollow body shrimp, you could probably use some sort of weedless hook. Uh, and that's going to add just a little bit of weight. That hollow body might float it, but more than likely the hook is going to get it just below the surface of the water and you might have a really slow descent. And I think that would probably be attractive to a triple tail. Um, if you want, you could put it on a jig head. You could, you know, I would say maybe like an eighth ounce or a quarter ounce jig head. That would probably be a good way to go. As I do more of this type of fishing, I'm going to have these types of lures available and I'm going to try these more often. Um, I do love my live bait fishing, but it's definitely satisfying when you can throw a lure like one of these and get a triple tail or any other fish to bite it. That's, uh, that's, that's definitely something uh, that you can count as an accomplishment. A new species caught on a lure is always cool. But anyway, I hope these tips help you on your next fishing trip if you encounter triple tail. And if you've got something that's working for you, definitely email me. Leave it in the comments. I want to know what's going on out there with triple tail fishing. Uh, if you got video clips, you know, share it. Let's see it. But uh, I think that wraps it up for today. Thanks for coming by the channel. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And I'll see you next time.